Welcome, and thank you for watching another Michael Allard tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over on how to install everything so that you can be fully set up to begin programming with UDK. If you were watching my previous series or are still following the previous Getting Your Game series, you might run into a few issues here and there and notice that that series is vastly outdated. Uh, this series is starting with December of 2011 for its UDK build, and it should pretty much be fully up to date and there shouldn't be too many much changes in the future. Now let's get started. Now the first thing I want to say is uh, you need to download a few things and if you're reading this post off my website you'll be able to find them on this post but if you're looking at the UDK forms or whatever there should be links there too and the first thing you're going to need is the Unreal Development Kit obviously. Now you should already have this installed if you're going this far into looking at the store, but if you don't, that's okay. Now I'm going to be using the, as I said before, the December 2011 UDK release. This is the latest version at the time of making this video, and it's fancy and it has some features that weren't there last year, and very cool. Now once you get that downloaded, you will see this. Now if you already have your copy, you might as well skip ahead, but as you see, this is a fresh installation. I'm installing everything default and I want to pause this as this goes through and here we are with the installation almost done here now for me this took about 30 34 seconds but depending on your computer it can take all kinds of different times now once this is done we're just going to close this we'll open it up later cool now that out of the way uh, for this series I want to be using Visual Studio 2010 now in the past I've used different programs like Notepad++ which is a common one that people search for all the time and there's Walk Grill, which I still recommend if you can't get Visual Studio I'll talk about that in a bit and Uncodex which I always recommend until it gets replaced and there's a few other programs out there like uh, Alexander77 on the forums has this Unreal Script IDE if you google that you might find some cool stuff about that but in my opinion it's not fully developed enough yet However, uh, this, as I said before, is about installing Visual Studio 2010, and so far this is the best solution that I know of in order to get everything working and stuff like that. Now, before with Visual Studio, you used to use a solution called Infringe. If you're coming here looking for Infringe, uh, my site does not bother with Infringe anymore. This instead uses the new Visual Assist X plugin. I'll go over that in a second. Now, if you don't have Visual Studio 2010, you're going to need a copy or again get walk real and you can skip this and google walk real or search on my site it's w-o-t-g-r-e-a-l and get that installed but if you're here and you're still watching this Visual Studio 2010 highly recommended now you don't need the ultimate trial you don't need the uh, the premium version all you need what I use is the Visual, Visual Studio 2010 professional version and you can get a free trial here which I think lasts for 30 days maybe longer however if you are a student then you can also get yourself a free copy completely free of Visual Studio 2010 and in order to do that all you have to do is go to dreamspark.com and if you sign in with your Microsoft ID and you verify yourself there's a few ways to get verified uh, if your school's not listed through the site you can go to a site called journeyed.com and get verified that way but in any case, uh, DreamSpark offers a bunch of Microsoft and a few other companies. Uh, they offer their applications for free. Again, this is for students, college students, high school students. Uh, and you can go ahead and you can, uh, you can get Visual Studio 2010 if you're a verified student. You can download it. It's the full thing and it's very nice. But again, if you're not a student, you're going to have to go off trials or you know, find a way to get Visual Studio. Alright, now once you get Visual Studio installed, it, it's pretty nice and stuff. If it's your first time installing, you might get a, a pop-up saying uh, which developer environment you want to load. Uh, I use the C++ developer environment, but uh, that really doesn't matter too much. Now, assuming you got that out of the way, uh, the next thing you need to get for Visual Studio, if you don't have it already, is Visual Assist X. Now Visual Assist X is mainly for C++ programmers but it supports all kinds of different languages and Visual Assist X is the most powerful 
autocomplete code browsing IntelliSense program plugin that I've ever known. And I use this program daily. If you're into other languages, like, like especially C++, Visual Assist X is invaluable. However, it's only a commercial solution. You can't get it for free. You can, you can use a free trial, but free trial runs out after 30 days. However, if you're a student, it's really cheap. I believe I paid 30 or 50 bucks for it. And it's very, very worth the price, especially if you're getting into more advanced programming in other languages. But um, you can download the free trial and set that up. Just make sure you get the latest version. If you already have it, you need to update to the latest version, which you can just download again. And yeah. Now, that pretty much is a self explanatory install. Now, in order to get Visual Assist X running with Unreal Script on UDN, some of you, I mean, if you're watching this, you might have already seen this page here. And for some reason, some people are saying this doesn't work, or they're having issues, or they're not really sh unsure how to do some of the steps, even though they're pretty straightforward. Uh, let's just go through those steps now. Now, after you get on Visual Assist X installed, uh, you're going to need to uh, first basically tell Visual Studio to look for the .uc files. If uh, you load a .uc file, it's going to treat it like a regular text document, but if you register it with Visual Studio, it will treat it as C++, which is kind of weird, but Visual Assist X knows Unreal Script from C++, so it kind of works in a roundabout way. Now. I already have Visual Studio open here, and it should something look generally look something like this. Now, sometimes if you're new to Visual Studio, especially your Solution Explorer will be on the right. I highly recommend putting it on the on the left side here because it is just unbelievably, for me at least, unbelievably easier to go from left to right reading wise and looking at that. But that's up to your preference. I want to go ahead and have this on here. And sometimes you have this visual assist outline. That, that's kind of helpful too. And uh, yeah. So once you get this all set up, uh, or all loaded, I should say, and you should have a visual assist, X, visual assist X menu bar on the top left. If you don't have that, you need to go back and figure out where you went wrong with installing visual assist X. Very important that you have this up here. Otherwise, it's not installed. Now, once you have this set up, you want to go to Tools, and you want to go to Options. Now under Options, there's a lot of options here, but we want to directly go to is you want to go to the Text Editor category on the left. Then right immediately underneath that are, you want to go to File Extension. Now File Extension, this lets you associate different file extensions to different languages. For now, uh, all we need to worry about is getting to the screen and in this extension box we need to type UC then in our editor drop down we want to select Visual, Microsoft Visual C++ then click add and we also want to do this with another extension UCI make sure it's Visual C++ still and hit add and then after that we can hit OK and we're done for that part now now there's one more step we need to do to fully enable Visual Assist X with Unreal Script and it's kind of an out of the way step now in the future, this might be solved, this might be automatically done for you, but for now, at least for on the December 12, 2011 build, we have to do this a little hack method, I guess we can call it. Now we can go, we have to close Visual Studio for now, and again, this is going right off the UDN. In order to enable, on, in order to enable Unreal Script support inside of Visual Assist X, what we need to do is we need to copy this text below, save it as a registry, and do all that sort of stuff. However, if you're already doing this from my site or whatever, you can download the Visual Studio 2010 project files and VAX enabler. It's a long name, but it is what it is. Now you're going to have to download this anyway. So uh, once you have this downloaded, you're going to basically see just have a zip file. And in the zip file, there's going to be four files. Now the first, for now, we just want to worry about this VAX Unreal Script enabler. You can go ahead and drag this onto your desktop. Now for those who are wondering if this is some sort of crazy hack or something because that REG files are dangerous, this is in fact, if you open it up, right click and hit edit, you'll get notepad. This is a direct copy paste from the UDN. Right here. 
there's no trickery, nothing's going to get hacked or anything. This is just a convenient copy paste of this. That way you don't have to worry about extensions and saving and stuff like that. Now, once you have it downloaded, just double click it or right click and click merge. And you might, uh, you might get a UAC prompt saying, would you like to enable this? You need to be an administrator to do this. You have to click yes. And you're going to get this warning box. Just hit yes. Everything's fine. Then it should say the keys and values, blah, 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 has been successfully added to the registry. Once that's done, you can now go ahead and delete this enabler file. You don't have to worry about that ever again. It's gone. But you still need these other files, and we'll get to those in a second. All right. So I'm just going to move this out of the way here. Now, after you've done this, there's some special stuff about snippets, but we're not going to cover that. Now, the next program you need, or you don't necessarily need it, you have all you need right now to begin programming, but I highly recommend getting Uncodex. And in all my previous tutorials, uh, I've highly recommended this before. Everyone knows that I use Uncodex, and I used to use an Uncodex Wild Girl combination, which, again, if you don't have Visual Studio, I want you to go look up uh, Wild Girl, which is W O T G R E A L, and you'll end up a website like this. It's a little tricky to get it installed, but there are other videos and stuff going about how to install this. In fact, there's even an article on the UDN. And I'll post a link to that in this blog as well, or in this post for this video. Or under the YouTube link, it'll be there. Now, on Codex, you just Google on Codex. Uh, it's usually this first link here by El Marte. I can't say his name right, but you get the idea. Now, when you first get to his site, you might see something called the Unreal Script code class preprocessor. This is not what you want. On the top left there's a button for Uncodex. You want to click that. Now you're at the Uncodex page. And the website's a little funky. It's a little bit outdated. But in this box here, make sure you click in here and scroll down and you should see the download section. And you want download version 232. There'll be a direct link to this as well on the post that you'll see this video from, but you want to make sure you download that. So I'm going to go ahead and download that now. You'll be It'll be linked to source forage and it should automatically start. If it doesn't, you can click the direct link, blah blah blah. And this is a really, really fast download. I'll go ahead and close this page here. And once you have it installed, you just install defaults all the way across. You don't really need to do anything special. And boom. It's done. Now we Let's go ahead and launch on Codex. If you skip that option at the end of install, you can always use your desktop shortcut or whatever. First time you load it, it's going to ask you, do you want to edit your settings right now? You want to click yes. And you're immediately brought to the source path settings. If you don't, if you accidentally hit no, I'll show you how to go back to this, but you want to click add in this box here. And you want to navigate to your installed copy, preferably the December 2011 build. If you use any earlier build, I'm not sure if this will fully work with the Visual Studio stuff, but here you go. Now in this folder, you want to navigate to Development Source, or SRC. I'm just going to always call that from Source now, but yeah, it's SRC. So you want to navigate to your Development Source folder, and with the Source folder highlighted and selected, you want to hit OK. And then after that, you just hit the green checkbox, OK. And it's going to ask you, would you like to scan? Just hit yes. And you're going to be greeted with the Uncodex window, basically. In the bottom, there's going to be lots of junk, lots of red X's, but don't worry about that. Now, once it scans, everything should be done. It should say operation completed. What I highly recommend, again, these are just some UI changes, just like how in Visual Studio I moved the server or the solution explorer from the right to the left. Uh, moving it so things around in here. Now, what I always do is I always hide the package tree. This here is the package tree. It lists all the packages and all the classes in the package. Now, Visual Studio kind of already does this for us based on how the file structure is laid out, so we don't need two of these. Go ahead and get rid of the package tree. Now, for this, I'm going to move this uh, divider over here. Now, on the left here, we have what's called the class tree. Basically, we have the object class and a bunch of stuff that derives from it. 
we'll go over on what this all means later but make sure you wanna if you, your left side looks like this and one last thing here is under view you wanna go to property inspector go ahead and uh, get this now if you go in here and you click random things you should see stuff in here we'll worry about what's in there later but you should see stuff in here and you should see code and here and things like that if you click stuff it should navigate and you don't really need this log down here so if you want to have some extra screen space you can hide the log there you go now if you hit no on that earlier box or you need to change your project settings or whatever if, uh, it's really easy to do. all you have to do is go to tree and go to settings and you're back in the source paths box and you can just remove this or add your path or whatever you need to do it's there Go ahead and minimize this for now. Now once you have that all set up, the, the next thing to do is to navigate to your UDK installation. So I'll bring this up here. Now once you're in your UDK folder, it should look like this. If it's a, if it's a clean install, there's nothing else here. It's your binaries, development, engine, UDK game. And we'll go over what that means here, but basically in order to start the game, you need to go in your binaries folder, your code goes in the development folder, engine is engine stuff you don't ever touch that ever and UDK game that's where all your future stuff will go all your content so for now we're just going to open up the development folder and now that we're in our development folder we're going to open up our package up or our zip file that we downloaded earlier the Visual Studio Projects and Vax Enabler and we're going to take the, the three development files in here and we're just going to drag them over here. Now, if you're using WinZip or WinRAR or Windows built-in Zip Explorer, it might look a little different. The principle is the same. You're just going to get these files over here. And now we're done with the, our download. You can go ahead and delete that or keep it for backup or whatever you need to do. Once you have these files in here, all you have to do is double-click your development.vcx project. And Visual Studio will go ahead and load up. Now that we've loaded the development tree up, all we, uh, if you expand the development folder here, you're going to see development project and then the source project or the source filter technically. And here's all the packages in our C++ or in our Unreal script directory. Now if we expand these, we can get to our classes. And if you double click one of these files here, you should see it light up in not all the words will be colored, but you should see green comments, blue keywords, uh, red functions. You should see things like that. If you don't see this, then you want to make sure that you added your file extensions in the Visual Studio like we did earlier, that you've installed, installed Visual Assistex, and make sure that you've enabled your registry. But once you have that all set, it's going to look like this. And there's some fancy things you can do once it's all set up, but we're going to cover those in a next tutorials and that with that said with your visual studio coloring that you see files with your development project that you have here and your uncodex with a bunch of stuff here that's all the tools you're going to need to begin programming for unreal script and technically you don't even need uncodex uncodex is just a very nice thing that to have around that will I'll show you how to work with over and over again throughout this series and uh, thank you for watching and the next tutorial will be about how to get your first game project actually running get your code loaded things like that but for now this is this is all the tools you need thank you for watching and I uh, hope you keep following my blog thank you